So I wasn't going to record this, but I'm going to say hello and welcome to another Outlaws of Thunder Junction draft. I'm Paul Chion, and I was doing a casual draft and I opened a Bonnie Paul. Look at this. My hair is not even done and I'm just, look, <laughs> I don't even have a t-shirt on. I apologize, but I opened a Bonnie Paul, so I figured this is the best. I do want to make a video where I have Bonnie Paul on my deck, so here we are. Let's go. Let's see what happens. Because we are going to first pick Bonnie Paul, take it, and see what happens. Okay. Here I was just relaxing, but it is what it is. Okay, let's move on to the next pack here. This is a fairly weak pack. Uh, Wrangler of the Damned is okay, if you want to be a blue-white uh, deck. I actually don't even know what to do, because I don't draft blue-green all that often. There's Archmage's Newt, which has potential as a two mana card. So maybe I just take that as a two drop. Uh, I don't think it's a particularly good two drop and I feel like you can cut it in a lot of instances, but I guess it does allow us to try to cut off blue. And I just don't really like a lot of the other cards in this pack here. I could also take Ankle Biter, I suppose. That is the other consideration. It might actually be better than the Newt, but let's take the Newt, it's a rare. All right. Um, yeah, I was super not ready for this. Okay, uh, moving on to, to this pack. We have Consuming Ashes and Mystical Tether as kind of the two top options here. Uh, both very, very good removal spells. The question is, what do I want to draft to pair with the Bonnie Paul? Now, the Consuming Ashes is better if I don't go a green base deck, right? Green typically tends to be overdrafted. So do I want to go something like a Mystical Tether and be maybe a blue-white deck, splash green? Or do I want to be a blue-black deck, splash green? I think between the two options, I'd rather be blue, black, splash green. So I will take Consuming Ashes over to Tether. Not only that, the Surveil allows us to uh, uh, search for the Bonnie Paul, and then we also have the Newt, which we can use to cast the Consuming Ashes from the graveyard. But a lot of good options here, and let's see where things go. Oh man, I was super... Okay, I'm going to stop, I, but I'm going to say it just one last time. I was not ready for this video. Okay, moving on here, we have a Chrom Violent Cacophony. Visage Bandit is not very good with Bonnie Paul because both of the cards here are legendary. But for us, we have a Desperate Bloodseeker, which is pretty nice. It's just a nice two drop to play in this deck. Self mill and then finding a way to get Bonnie Paul back from the graveyard, I think is super, super good. Especially if you have something like a Bonnie Paul, you really do want to be able to just find this as soon as possible and put it into play, which is why I do like having black in Bonnie Paul decks. And I don't think I want to take the Chrom. I think Chrom is a more powerful card, but based on what I have here, I'd rather just take the Desperate Bloodseeker and just look to draft maybe a blue black crime deck. Um, and then splashing away to get Bonnie Paul back into play. And this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect here. We have Badlands Revival. I do like Thoughtseize as, as an interactive spell here. Um, but I think that Badlands Revival in conjunction with Desperate Bloodseeker as a way to splash the Bonnie Paul and put it back into play from the graveyard is really, really strong. So I will take Badlands Revival over Thoughtseize. And move on from here. Okay, so... A lot of different directions we can go here. And honestly, it does look like blue might be drying up here. So perhaps we should go uh, back into green here. Uh, Spinewood's Paladin is by far the best card in this pack. Intrepid Stablemaster, I like it more in the mounts deck when you can use it to give you colors for the mounts. But it's just a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two Accelerator, uh, which is fine. And it does allow you to ramp into Bonnie Paul. But I think I still prefer the Spinewood's. So let's go ahead and take that here. We might just be straight three colors, we'll see. In which case, I will value cards like the Oasis Gardener higher, but there's no blue or black card I want out of this pack. So I'm gonna take the Spinewoods Paladin and just kind of see where things go. All right, uh, moving on here, we have Failed Affording as the only Sultai card. I'm just kind of looking for cards into Sultai colors. So we'll, we'll go ahead and take that and we'll see if we end up putting it into our deck. Surgical Extraction is certainly a card that I don't really want to play. Uh, Voracious Varmint is a fine two mana creature to play as a curve filler. I do like it more than Tumbleweed Rising just, just to have as a two mana card. So let's go ahead and take that. And strangely enough, uh, not seeing that much blue, right? Usually blue is pretty open, but I'm not seeing any good uncommons. I'm not even seeing a Phantom Interference. So perhaps blue is just not where we need to be. And we can just try our best to make the mana work here for the Bonnie Paul. But I don't really like Skullduggery, to be honest, so I'm still just going to take Take the Fall here over Stop Cold in case we do end up in blue-black. I'm going to just keep it up here for now, but we'll see kind of what colors we need to be here. I will take an Ankle Biter, just a nice little cheap creature to help you survive into the late game. And we shall see how this goes. 
A lot of different directions. And honestly, the rest of the pack wasn't that strong outside of the Bonnie Paul. But I just, well, I opened Bonnie Paul and I just got excited. And I was like, look, I got to turn this on. I got to turn this on just so we can make this happen. Now, the Visage Bandit tables tabled, but that's not necessarily a sign that blue is open. Um, I do like this more in blue-green because you typically have large green monsters to copy. Imagine putting a Spinewoods Paladin into play and then copying it. But of course, like I said, it doesn't really combo with the Bonnie Paul. Black seems to be drying up. That's a Gin of Fool's Fall. But let's see how the... Oh, and that's a Mana Drain. All right. Well, you know what? Even if it's not open, we're certainly getting... We're certainly opening the cards for this deck here. Uh, didn't see a whole lot of black outside of the Consuming Ashes. So maybe there is a world where we just end up in blue-green here. I am going to slam the Mana Drain here. Cactarantula and Rambling Possum are, are both fine options here. But I will take the Mana Drain, and I guess we are going to... Try to make this happen, and oh my gosh, look at this! We're just we're getting big. We're getting big score cards. We're getting uh, uh, bonus sheet cards. I guess we don't have any big score cards, but we're getting uh, brazen borrower, which is fantastic. I do like slick shot lock picker, and I also like the unfortunate accident. But uh, obviously, when we're c committing to the mana drain, we're going to be heavy blue, which means it's between the slick shot lock picker and the brazen borrower. And it does feel like green is probably a little bit more open here than black, and Brazen Borrower is just a fantastic card. So I will slam it here and be uh, pretty happy with it. And now we get an Oko! Oh my gosh! Simic is on the menu here, friends. We have Oko and Bonnie Paul. Can we get three mana Oko up in here? Oh my goodness. Okay, let's, let's, let's figure this out. Something like this. I don't really want to play Failed Fording unless I do end up with some deserts. I guess I'll just put it here for now, but let's slam Oko and see where this goes. Okay, there's another Spinewoods Paladin. I'm going to slam it here over a Conduit Pylons. I don't really think I need deserts right now. It splashes, but I think Spinewoods Pal Paladin is just too premium of a card here to pass up on. So let's go ahead and take it here. I mean, like I, we got power here. We have power. Ooh, and there is a Smuggler Surprise. I do like this. There's a Consuming Ashes, but it looks like Black is going to be on the Splash, in which case I don't really have any interest in it. And Smuggler Surprise is a nice way to find Bonnie Paul. It's a nice way to put Bonnie Paul into play as well. So going to take that here and be pretty happy with it. Certainly a deck that could use some Mana Acceleration. So Hard Bristle Bandit, while I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of in this particular deck, I do think it has a home. I got to share the Paul experience with all of you, right? All right, there's a Lush Oasis. I can't imagine I'm going to take anything over that. There is a Hollow Marauder in the pack along with the Tyrant Scorn. Hollow Marauder is interesting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Hmm. Hollow Marauder is a very good card. And I'm kind of interested in Splashing Black. Should I take the Marauder and Splash it? It's a premium card. This is an on-colored... Hmm. All right, I'm greedy. I'm greedy. Oh, there's another one. There's another Spinewoods Paladin. Huh. Huh. All right. We are going maximum greed. Okay, slamming this Mirage Mesa here. And uh, we are going to heavily, heavily prioritize mana fixing now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we are completely good on late game cards here. And we are going to do everything we can to kind of survive. I'll take a Jailbreak Scheme as a cheap bounce spell here, or cheap-ish. Uh, and certainly going to be focusing, and Visage Bandit certainly looking a lot better here now, with double Spinewoods Paladin and double Hollow Marauder. Uh, we really want to find cards like the Patient Naturalist Stubborn Burrow Fiend as additional ways to mill ourselves. So hopefully we can find something like that. Take a Thornado here, if we do end up being light on removal. We'll take a Spring Splasher as a 2, but not interested in that. We'll take a Harrier Strix, not interested in that. Might pay, play Failed Fording, honestly, just to have some cheap interaction. But right now, these are the things that we're looking for, okay? Cheap, uh, cheap removal, if possible. Mana fixing uh, in the form of Deserts or Hard Bristle Bandits, okay? That's what we're looking for. So hopefully we can pick that up here. But uh, don't mind this start, not gonna lie. We took a lot of power and we definitely went for maximum greed, okay? And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say otherwise. We definitely, definitely went for maximum greed here, all right? All right, moving on, what do we have here? There's a Lone Shark. I don't think I need another expensive card here. There's an Oasis Gardener and honestly, 
Honestly, I might first pick the Oasis Gardener. Here, I'm going to put this in as a spell. It is a bounce effect. Um, this pack is horrible for us. If I'm looking to play a blue-green deck, Splash Black, I don't need the Creosote Heath, right? I don't... There's no desert payoff card that I have here, really, outside of the field fording. So I'm going to take Oasis Gardener. I think this is just a pretty important role player in the deck that we have in front of us right now. That's a Spinewoods Armadillo. Oh, my gosh. We are going to slam that. Whoever was passing to us first picked a rare. Uh, a, a rare, one rare pack. We're going to slam Spinewoods Armadillo, one of the best uncommons in the set, in my opinion. Great with Badlands Revival. Gets us the Black Source. It is everything that this deck wants. That is another Badlands Revival, but I am not going to take it. I'm taking Hard Bristle Bandit here. This is exactly what we want. We have double Hollow Marauder, double Spinewoods Paladin, Bonnie Paul, Armadillo, Badlands Revival, Smuggler Surprise. Like, our late game is set. Hard Bristle Bandit is just literally exactly what this deck wants. I might not play the Newt here either. This is looking exciting. All we need to do is just survive, right? All we need to do is survive and ramp, survive and ramp. So let's try to make sure we can draft accordingly. Moving on to this pack, there is a Lush Oasis. I think I'm gonna take that here for the purposes of mana fixing. I don't care about Deep Muck Desperado. Uh, Bristle Pack Sentry is the other option, but given that we're three colors and we need mana fixing pretty badly, I will take the Lush Oasis here just to make sure that we have the proper sources to be able to play Bonnie Paul, the Hollow Marauders, and the Badlands Revivals. Okay, what do we have? Ooh, Dance of the Tumbleweeds, just what we wanted. That is a late consuming ashes. There's a Greed's Gambit, and if there's anything, if th this card just sums up exactly what our deck's trying to do perfectly, but I'm gonna take Dance of the Tumbleweeds. I do think it's better than the Oasis Gardener, and I am super duper happy to pick that up as it gives us a ramp spell that also doubles as a giant creature in the late game. All right, I am, I am really excited about this deck. I mean, we're a little bit light on interaction, and by a little bit, we are super light on interaction. We have just a bounce spell, so would love... The problem is with blue-green, there's just not much you can splash for... There's not much you can play as removal, right? Right. All you have are the bite spells, and we just don't have any. Not really interested in splashing Thunder Salvo. I guess I'll take a Shackle Slinger, but I'm probably not going to play it. Like, I have... Basically, I can play it potentially up to three bounce spells in this deck, and that's basically it. There are some black cards I don't care about. There's another Shackle Slinger. There's an Arch... Another Newt. Not really good with counter spells. I Yeah, I mean, I don't really know how good these Newts are. This is mostly a... Um, this is kind of mostly a... If I need a two-mana creature, which right now it looks like we do, I will play it. I mean, honestly, right now, I'm going to play all of these cards because this is 22 cards. And here we have... Ooh, Journey to Nowhere. I just don't want to splash... Honestly, I don't want to splash a third color with Bonnie Paul and Double Hollow Marauder. So as much as I like Journey to Nowhere, I think I just want to take something that allows me to do something early. I don't want another Visage Bandit. It's between Phantom Interference and Voracious Varmint. I think I'll just take the Phantom Interference here. And now we will take a Lone Shark for our deck. And now we get to cut a card here. It might be the Bandit. I'm not sure. There's another Take the Fall. These could also certainly go. I think this is kind of what I'm happy with. And I'm actually a little bit surprised. People, I guess people are taking Oasis Gardeners a lot higher than they used to be. Because I am not seeing any on the wheel here. Now, is this a deck where I play double Ankle Biter? I don't like this as much when I am... I don't like this as much when I don't have any bite spells. But if I'm playing a blue-green deck and uh, I don't have any removal... This is kind of just my best way to deal with some big ground creatures that my opponents might have. So I feel like it's probably a necessary evil for my deck. Additionally, it does allow me to survive and trade with stuff so that I can cast my Hollow Marauders in the late game. So I do think I'm going to play these, um, these Ankle Biters. And uh, so this is our deck. This is our deck. It's not it's certainly not perfect. Certainly not perfect, but it's definitely very exciting. There's a Tornado here that I could consider playing. Let's put the Visage Bandit in there. Seize the Seek. Okay, let's just... I always do this, even though I know that I'm going to cut all of these cards. But uh, let's still take a look here and see what is available. Something like that. Certainly don't need a Jinn of Fool's Fall. We can put this in the 4-mana slot. Visage Bandit can go in the 3-mana slot. And Hollow Marauder is like... 
hopefully a five drop. Something like this. Now let's take a look at take the fall. I'm not gonna consider Archmage's Newt for anything here. It's just, I'm gonna do a uh, bandit count and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Does this make one? No, it makes an elk. So it doesn't seem very good here. And I don't have any double spell cards. So yeah, let's cut those. I want to focus most of my spells on interaction here. So let's just try to keep it that way. All right, you know what? I think I'm still just going to cut these newts. I just don't think they're going to be very good. Maybe something like this. The only reason why I'm playing Seize the Secrets is I have a lot of mana acceleration and it just helps us, it just draws us into the big things that we want to cast. And then um, certainly just want like one swamp. I think we want lots of islands uh, because we have mana drain. I think we probably want a lot of forests as well. So something like this, because this gives us nine green, nine blue, and then two black plus the Gardener, the Bandit, and Dance of the Tumbleweeds, five, and Spinewood's Armadillo, six. So yeah, our black sources are, are great. I think this is looking okay here. Actually, on second thought, I just, with the sheer lack of removal that I have, let's play, you know, I really don't like the Tornado, but this deck just literally has no, not even a single fight spell. So I will play the Tornado as kind of a necessary evil for removal. And let's give this a shot. Let's give this a shot. I don't have as much removal as I'd like, but hopefully we can just overpower everybody with our bombs. Alrighty, round one. Well, we have the, man, this hand just needed lands. We, we're even over indexing on mana, by the way. We have like 17 lands, Hard Bristle Bandit, Dance of the Tumbleweeds, Oasis Gardener. Do I keep this? One lander on the draw, turn two Hard Bristle Bandit into Dance of the Tumbleweeds? I have a Bonnie Paul? Come on, I have a Bonnie Paul. I mean, if they kill this, it's kind of a problem, right? Mm. Oh, this, this was such a mistake. It was such a mistake. This is for all you, uh, your, uh, this is for all you greed bags. I'm doing it for you, all right? One lander on the draw, Hard Bristle Bandit plus Dance of the Tumbleweeds. We have Bonnie Paul in our hand. Our opponent did play a Jagged Baron, so there's a really good shot that this Hard Bristle Bandit dies. But um, this is the life that we chose to lead. Oh my gosh, don't kill it. Don't you kill it. <laughs> okay, they didn't kill it. They just drew cards. Alrighty. Well, we didn't draw a land here, but that's fine. Do we get a blue-green land here? I sure, I think so. Let's do that. And then attack. Alright. Well, you know, if we can successfully mana drain something, right? If our Hard Bristle Bandit does not die, then we can mana drain into Bonnie Paul. So that is a thing. Really would have liked a blue-black or a green-black land. I mean, I can't complain about a blue-green land, to be honest. Okay, you know what? They're, they are not punishing us, right? They are not punishing us in the slightest here. Um, let me think. The interesting thing here is I can actually bounce and play a Lone Shark. Or I can just mana drain. The thing is, they're, they're, they're stuck on lands too, right? And this, this bounces opposing things. I'm just going to keep up mana drain. Let's, let, let's be real here. Let's keep it really real. Everybody wants me to mana drain into something. Everybody. Even my, even my family, who doesn't play Magic. And if they don't play anything, we can just bounce something with Brazen Borrower and then just replay it, right? And then just play Brazen Borrow end of turn, which is totally fine. Blood Hustler. Do I drain that? So that gives me access to... I mean, I'll have the mana to cast Bonnie Paul. Alternatively, I can just 
still play it kind of conservatively here and then just make a 2-2. The thing, how are they gonna beat a Bonnie Paul? Let's be real. Did they target me? Okay. Ooh, Tornado. Yes, I would like to uh, play Bonnie Paul here in attack. Oh yes, I would like to put a land into play. Does this thing have reach? Of course every ridiculous rare in this format has reach. By the way, Railway Brawler also has reach. <laughs> so, all right, well, we managed rain into Bonnie Paul. That's uh, it's pretty strong, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna say... Oh, it was really funny. I... I opened Bonnie Paul, and I just ran... I just ran as fast as I could... to just make sure I set everything up here. <laughs> uh, alright, what do I want to do? I don't know. Attack? Okay. Um... There you go. I just want a, uh, some validation on my decision to play Tornado, which is why I killed it. But alright! <laughs> rank 12! I think we got a rank there. Let's go Bonnie Paul Managerain Oko dot deck. We got some fillers here, but I hope the rest of our deck is good enough. Uh, by the way, that was a one lander <laughs> that we kept. No, no green sources. I just kept because I had two blue and a mana drain. Uh huh. Okay. One forest would be nice. I'm gonna let that one resolve. Really need a green source. Really, really need a green source. We'll probably manage rain their turn three play. Just anything. Drover, Grizzly, whatever. Oh, come on. All right. We have nine green sources in the deck, so... I mean, obviously I can't complain too much about my mana situation here, but... Alright, a forest off the top would be so incredible. A trained air... Uh, whatever. I'm, I mean, I'm... I'm countering anything. Yep. Boom! Perfect. Oh, that is incredible. That's super good. So, Because now we can um, dance at the Tumbleweeds, I think. Actually, we have a lot of good options. Uh, I need double green for that. Three, four, five, six. I can dance at the Tumbleweeds for... I can just dance at the Tumbleweeds for a green source and then just play Hard Bristle Bandit, which seems pretty good. So, three, four, five, six... This gives us a ton of mana for Smuggler Surprise. We can also set up a double spell turn with Ankle Biter and Lone Shark. So yeah, finding that green source completely unlocked our hand. So now we can actually go toe to toe with our opponent. Oh man, can you imagine if I had mana up for Smuggler Surprise? That would be really awesome, but it's okay. I'm not too concerned about the damage here. Huh. I considered like using Jailbreak Scheme, but I decided against it. We do have Phantom Interference up. That was not a it was that was not a terrible draw. Ornery Tumblewag. 
Yeah, that's super annoying. It's okay. We do have this ankle biter, so it doesn't really matter that much. But Tumblewag is an extremely good magic card. Uh, okay. Um, ah, that's brutal. Um, what do I do? Three plus five is eight mana. One, two, three, four, seven mana. I mean, I can just like play Hollow Marauder and hope. Alternatively, I can just bounce the Beast Bond Outcaster. Then they don't really have a great attack. I mean, they can tap my Ankle Biter. Three, four counters. Okay. It's a very awkward line here, but I'm basically doing this so that it's a lot harder for them to kind of do everything that they want. Um, they're gonna like try to tap my ankle biter and then try to attack with the tumble wag. But th if they want to attack with their tumble wag, they're gonna have to main phase tap down my loan shark. In which case, if they do that and they try to play the beast bond outcaster afterwards, oh well, no, no, they're gonna need a creature and play the saddle this to give it a bunch of counters too, so. Like I said, our deck doesn't have a lot of removal, so, uh, Dealing with bombs like the Tumblewag is a problem, definitely. Which is why we're playing the Ankle Biters, right? It's like... Gives us a chance. Our opponent's deck is phenomenal, though. Phenomenal. They got the Green Blade, the Tumblewag, the Beast Bond Outcaster, Tether for my stuff. They can get a Desert here, play a land, put a counter on the Green Blade, play the Outcaster. Alright, looks like they're out of Deserts at least. They can still tap my Creature, Saddle. I mean, if they want to do this, if they want to do this, they have to tap my ankle biter. Yep. They're keeping up two mana? What the hell do they have? Ah, that's really frustrating. Got one more mana, one more mana, and I can play this for the spree cost, three plus five, eight. But because I don't have that available, I just can't do anything. All right. Oh, they get indestructible too? That's pretty good. We'll see, we'll see if they discard the Outcaster or their Mystery card. Wow. So you know their hand is a... You know whatever... You know that last card in their hand is awesome. If we draw if we drew a land here... If we drew a land that turn, that turn, we could have used Smuggler Surprise to make all of our four power creatures hard to kill, but... It is what it is. They probably have some kind of ridiculous combat trick here. It's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Alright. It's gotta be like Snakeskin Veil or something along those lines. Okay. It's kind of awkward, but do I copy Ankle Biter? Or do I just copy Hollow Marauder and just try to go nuts with that? <sighs> Hollow Marauder just seems so much better. Alright, what you got? We know it's a Take Up the Shield or a Snakeskin Veil. It's one of those cards, I think. Yep. We still get to draw a card here. Failed fording. Oh, that's amazing. That is amazing. 
Oh my gosh, this is close. This is definitely, definitely close. Let's see what they do. Super mega dupe, super duper mega, super duper close. All right. But I think the failed fording might help, might, might allow us to get out of this uh, sticky situation here. We'll see what they do. Fun game. They probably want to put the counters elsewhere, yeah. Yeah, let's ta let's bounce that back to your hand. All right, now we can actually get in for some. Uh, we can we can we can get in in the skies here now. I think. Do we want to put them on? So let's see. They can block here. I can do this. Make you discard your last card. All the Hollow Marauders. That's a Bonnie Paul. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Can we survive? Can we survive? We can even... We can even put this into play at instant speed. Although I imagine I just want to cast this. Although if I put, the, put it in at, at instant speed, um, I can also put the Oasis Gardener in play. We shall see. Oh man. What did you draw? What did you draw? If they tap down the Ankle Biter and kill the Hollow Marauder, I'm still not dead. I can block the Outcaster Green Blade and then take three from the Tumblewag, and then they die. Well, no, they don't die. Never mind. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's gross. Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Five, yep. They drew trash to town off the top. Talk about truly trash. <laughs> Come on! Come on! Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Are we dead? That's ridiculous. Like, they literally drew a card that gave you counters. That's so unbelievably lucky. <laughs> oh my gosh. Alright, whatever. It is what it is. We tried our best. We almost came back there. I wanted to put myself in a position to win with our flyers, and I thought we did a pretty good job of trying to, of surviving up till then. And they drew literally a card that gave two counters and a trample to their creature. Them's the beat sometimes. Ugh. That one felt like one of those games where like it was a hard fought game, and like I felt like man, we we earned that one right, F just coming back. I will say the Hollow Marauders, I think I might have been a little too high on it. I feel like you need to build around this just a little bit, so. That one's on me. Okay, our opponent's on Mono Deserts. Which is fine by me. Obviously our late game is quite powerful. Tai E Joaquin. See what they choose to do here. Put it on top, okay. Gonna just try to go for some tempo here. That is a uh, free strider commando, sure. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get an island here. I don't want a I wanna just get an island here. That way I can brazen borrower here. Or fail the fording. Yep. Yep. Man, what? A, they are doing all kinds of nonsense here. Um, hmm. The question is do I want to go with the failed fording or the brazen borrower? I want to go with the brazen borrower so that I can play it. Although, if I mill something huge, that would also be awesome. What if I hit like a Bonnie Paul? That would be that would be so sweet. Nah. All right, so there is our desert. 
Certainly not interested in attacking. And we'll pass. Yeah, we, you know what card we, what, that we really wanted with all this graveyard stuff? Patient Naturalist or Stubborn Burrow Fiend. But we did not see a single copy. Man, they are doing some things. Does this have reach? No. I just assume everything good in this format has reach now, so don't mind me. Yep, Commando's good. I mean, they have to have, like, relevant magic to- like, what are they doing? Okay. <laughs> uh, do I want this? I mean, I kind of want to play Hollow Marauder. So I guess I'll take it. It's not ideal. Let's make a thing. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, I like this. Let's just beat down. They're like dirtling around here with a bunch of, um, with a bunch of plot cards. Let's just try to put maximum pressure here. And then we have Badlands Revival in case some shenanigans happens with our creatures. That was incredible. We have nine power in the sky, so they need a removal spell here. Terminal Agony, okay. All right. So they can get that back in Slickshot Lockpicker. The Hollow Marauder. I don't have anything else to get back, right? So I probably, I might as well just uh, discard this. All right, so let's attack for five in the air. The question is, what do I put in the play? And I assume it's the Hollow Marauder just because it's like super lethal. So let's go ahead and um, cycle this. And get, I don't know, a forest. It could be a swamp too, I don't know. And then let's play this and return this to the battlefield and put this into our hand. Target our opponent. Draw a card. Ooh, ankle biter. Perfect. Perfect mana, no problem. All right. All right. They were lots of different colors, but we were able to overpower them. Didn't even need the Bonnie Paul or the Oko. Just kind of ramped into some, a, a bunch of value creatures. All right, let's keep this going. All right, opponent on the play. This hand is very nice for us. We have turn two hard bristle bandit, island in a forest with dance in the tumbleweeds, brazen borrower. Uh, just plenty of things to do here. So very, very happy with this hand. Our opponent going down to six with a Mirage Mesa on blue. But turn two Hard Bristle Bandit into turn three Plot Lone Shark is quite strong. Uh, hopefully we can sandbag the Dance of the Tumbleweeds so that we can make a, a large creature here, we'll see. But blue, green, white, white, wait. Blue, green, white here for the opponent and this is the perfect opportunity to plot because they're leaving up Counterspell mana but this could also easily be a Holy Cow here. End of turn. What are they doing? They're planning some heists. All right, so let's uh, yeah, let's go ahead and play Ankle Biter into Lone Shark. See what we draw. All right, and then we can play a Forest into Attack. Yep, yeah, draw your cards. I mean, that's certainly good off the Mulligan, right? So hopefully. Uh, it's actually extremely good, but hopefully we can uh, tempo them out here somehow. Fortune, Loyal Steed. Let's counter that. Uh, alrighty. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
So I can play a dance of the tumbleweeds here, which I think I want to do just to continue putting on pressure. Um, the question is, do I want to get a blue green land um, just to get in for two points of damage, or do I get a black land with the desert? I, I feel like I should get a desert here. You know, I just feel like they're not going to kill Harbristle Bandit, so I'm going to get a blue green land. Only because I feel like this is kind of a tempo game with our hand, and I think maximizing damage is pretty important here. That's a Bonnie Paul. Okay. Well, that's annoying. Okay, let's attack with the 6-6. Six, six. Okay, let's play a 7-7. Seven, seven. All right, well, they played a Bonnie Paul on us. Just natural Bonnie Pauls. Shepherd of the Clouds getting back there, okay. That's not overly, that's, that's manageable, I'm just gonna say. They have two mana up. I gotta think here. So if they block these, if they only block, if they only block one of these creatures and let the other one through, they die if I attack with all of these, right? Like let's say they block the armadillo. They have to block the armadillo and then they block this, then they die. Okay. And then I have the brazen borrower if they try to lifelink. All right, this is great. Yep, they have take up the shield here on Bonnie Paul, and then we're just going to bounce the Bonnie Paul. Woo! Beat a Bonnie Paul, no big deal. No big deal. Boom. Only I get to play Bonnie Paul, not you. All right, 11. Can we hit the top 10? Can we hit the top 10? I'm liking these uh, instant speed bounce spells, though, I will say. Yeah, I mean, that was an ideal draw for us. All right, this hand is a little bit worse, but we're on the draw and we have an Ankle Biter. I actually love the Ankle Biters in this deck, just because our late game is so good. And I like the fact that we have a lot of mana in our deck just because we have so much top end, too. Oh, Demonic Ruckus is kind of annoying um, because, like, it kind of stops the Ankle Biter strategy. They're like a red, white, or a red, black aggro deck. It's kind of okay. Well, at least they didn't play a two drop here. So let's go ahead and lead with the bandit tier. Really need to hit some land drops here. Don't kill my bandit. You just play your creature and put your demonic ruckus on it, okay? All right. Chill out over there. Yeah, prickly pear is good. Yep. So that's a lot of damage, definitely. Um, I'm not much I can do about it uh, next turn, so let's... Uh, it's actually interesting. It's actually interesting what I do. Uh, do I go with the Lone Shark, or do I go with the Spinewoods Paladin? This lets me draw an extra card, but this just puts a large... life-linking creature into play. Oh, you know what? No, no, no. Yeah, we plot this. Because if we don't draw a land next turn, we can still play the Paladin, then we can just play Lone Shark. Duh. And ideally, kind of the Paladins just help us race. Fault Plunderer, sure. Yeah, they... Red, black. Good red, black cards. Ooh. Jailbreak Scheme on that. I guess that's not that good. Forest? Oh. All right. That was a fantastic turnaround turn there for us. Do not mind that at all. Curious what they have here. Five cards in hand. We can, once again, for six mana, I can put like these two in play. 
If I feel like I'm in a pinch, I'm in a bind. I mean, if I have a Bonnie Paul, I might do that. Corrupted Conviction right away. So they're digging. I mean, I could double block this. With, like, with these two? Alright, yeah, I'm okay with that. Look, I just want this game to go long. Putting stuff in my graveyard is not terrible with this Hollow Marauder in my hand. I want to just start attacking with Spinewoods Paladins and gaining a bunch of life. Gila Courser from the opponent, okay. And Mono Hollow Marauders. This is still good because even if they saddle, I can just block with either. And if not, I mean, they're at 13 and I have two 5-4 tramplers in play. Honestly, and I didn't draw land number 6 to be able to cheat some creatures into play. Honestly, at this point, if I get their life total pretty low, it isn't bad to just put two hollow marauders into play at instant speed, right? So, certainly something that I'm going to consider here. Just kill them out of nowhere. Happy enough to go for a racing situation here. I mean, if they want to saddle, they have to tap their creature. Again, I have two 5-4 tramplers in play. Yeah, go ahead. You know what? Draw your cards. Draw your cards, friend. There's your Dead Eye Duelist. I, I, I'll go to 16. In fact, can I kill them with Jailbreak Scheme? I don't think so. Oh, four spells in one turn. Good beats. Good beats. You may put up to two creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Yeah, I think I'm just, I'm just gonna flash these both in. I just feel like it's so like, there's such a good chance that we're gonna be able to kill them if we do this. Yep. Oh, that's a really good draw. They can get back Prickly Pair, I guess. I mean, honestly, if they... Like, those are all things that are okay. I just feel like being able to go Smuggler Surprise, get two Hollow Marauders into play, and then Jailbreak Scheme is just going to be amazing here. They're going to be like, uh-oh. Target you twice. Yep. <laughs> and then we had Jailbreak Scheme for the Deadeye Duelist, and we could have given our 5-4 our Trampler um, uh, unblockable, and that would have done it. Okay, we have cracked the top 10. Cracked the top 10. With this sweet, sweet Sultai deck. Four and one. Let's keep it going. Can we can we continue to climb? Oh, this is really nice. We got a treat here. Going up against the rank number three player. Our hand is fantastic, but this time we don't have a... Man, can you imagine if this island was a forest, how good this hand would be? But I got a mulligan. I just keep, that hand doesn't do anything. We'll keep this. I will bin the Brazen Borrower. It requires double blue, and I want to play a one drop into a two drop, and then play Oko. Let's play the Varmint here. We drew the Armadillo. So we can use that to go get a Desert here. Possibly the blue-green one. We are playing against a black-white black -white deck. Man, that mulligan was so sad. So, so sad. I'm not very good at committing crime, so I'm not going to be able to draw two discard one very often. Desperate Bloodseeker, okay. Targeting themselves, and they hit a Mystical Tether. So, at this point, I'm probably not going to um, discard the Spinewoods Armadillo. 
Just because I have four lands here for the Yoko. I guess I have a, a land to get for the Yoko, which is pretty good. Vault Plunder, okay. This Oko is going to be a little bit dicey, right? Like, if they have a single removal spell, we're just so dead. Unless I choose the other mode, but if I choose the other mode, it's still dead. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just, I feel like I'm enough behind where I just kind of have to play this. It's just like my only option, so. Let's go ahead and make a beast. Or an elk, whatever. This is not ideal, obviously. Just a black white deck is going to be chock full of removal. Humiliate? That doesn't get it done. Okay. Okay. All right, they didn't have the removal spell, at least. <sighs> Interesting question. Do we loot? Draw? Do we draw two, discard two to try to find something that's bigger? It also makes it so that they still can't kill it. But they didn't have a removal spell last turn, right? That's the way I look at it, so... Let's just, let's just do this. I'm gonna still play this for black and pass. Oh, I can attack. The beginning of combat on my turn. Okay. I haven't played with this Oko very much, clearly. They know my hand. Like I said, if they had a removal spell, they would have used that last turn to kill the Oko. So I'm just going to play with that in mind here. If they have a combat trick, sure. And then next turn, I can go ahead and use the loot ability. Yeah, I like this. We have a nice little black white, black white, one of the highest win rate uh, color combinations that's not green. And given how overdrafted green is, I think black white is an excellent color combination to look to move into. Why are they main phasing that? Oh, because I have counter spells? Is this upkeep? Oh, it is. Okay. Huh. So maybe they have a land and a desert stew in their deck? Okay. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's do this. Uh, not quite good enough there. So what do we want to do? Because it is going to die the, uh, next turn. The question is whether or not I go for Oasis Gardener or Smuggler Surprise. I mean, if I go Smuggler Surprise, do I have any? Man, do I wish I had the Brazen Borrower, but... Guess too late for that. How many creatures in my graveyard? Three? So we'll get Spinewoods Paladin and an Island. And then we shall play Oasis Gardener. We will copy an elk. We'll attack. Do we attack with this one too? I mean, I don't really need the mana here, right? Just try to get in for as much damage as possible. Actually, how does this work? Can th This can die, right? Oh, they could have double blocked. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have attacked. Whoops. That might have been a mistake, I'm just going to say. I don't mind filling up my graveyard. It makes my Hollow Marauders cheaper. Right, I wanted Griffin for the opponent, and let's attack. Do I have any looting effects outside of this? I don't know if I should have played that land or not. All right, well, it's Paladin versus whatever two cards our opponent has. They did find a removal spell, and they get the Forsaken Miner back, so we're most definitely behind here now. 
That uh, Smuggler Surprise was pretty weak. It got us three lands and an Oasis Gardener. I'm playing lands here because there's just some weird combination of Hollow Marauders and stuff, but maybe not. Alright. Alright, this is probably a little too much, sadly. Man! Oh well. Oko tried. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't even know what we can draw here. Wow, they're drawing extremely well here, too. Not that it matters, we were dead anyways. GG, rank 3 opponent. At least I don't lose that much elo, but I have no idea how the system actually works. But yeah, we went from 11 to 9, and then we lost, I think we went from 9 to 10. So that's fine. Alright, we're 4 and 2, so now back is against the wall. I really do think our deck is fun. I don't know if it's like busted. It has busted rares, but it's blue-green and I lack interaction, so... Can lose to a lot of different things, but we have Mana Drain, Oko, Brazen Borrower, Bonnie Paul. I mean, we got power. Okay, we are on the play here. I am going to keep. This is a slow-ish hand. All I need is one land here because I have Oasis Gardener, Island, Forest, Phantom Interference. So I have something to do early here. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't Phantom Interference here because I drew Lush Oasis turn two. But certainly can't complain about being able to play a turn 3 Oasis Gardener here, so we're going to jam that here. See what our opponent plays turn 3. A Jailbreak Scheme, interesting. I mean, I guess I don't want it anymore. Let's play Oko. Let's make a Beast. I don't think it has haste, right? Okay. Let's ready for strike. Hope they don't play a flyer. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Let's go ahead and bounce this. Surveil. Spinewood's Paladin. Do I want that card? Sure. Then let's draw. Let's discard a Hollow Marauder. We, you know, we don't we don't need all of them. And we'll pass. We'll counter that. All right, this is going swimmingly here. <laughs> okay. Oko when you're not behind is completely ridiculous. What the? Are we getting Bonnie Pauled again, huh? Oh, well, you know, we're good this time. All right, put a plus one plus target. Okay, here, you. Unless they commandeer us, right? Boom. That's Bonnie Paul number two, by the way, from the opponent's side. But it's okay. We got Oko. Oko is Broko. It doesn't even matter if it costs four or three. We are now in the top eight. This month is ending swimmingly here. Let's keep it going for the trophy. Actually, we, got, we need two more. Two more for the trophy. All right, on the play here. Yeah, certainly keeping. We have two lands and a Spinewoods Armadillo. Would like to get a black source? Oh. No, I want to get a blue source now. I definitely want to get a blue source. Just an untapped blue source. We're not getting greedy here. Dust Animus, nice. Because we can play um, Smuggler Surprise. I'm not playing the Ankle Biter. I'd rather play Smuggler Surprise if they don't play anything. We have a tornado for that thing. Oh, yeah. What on earth are they playing? Okay. Anyways. We're going to cast this just to hit some lands. Oh, that's a Bonnie Paul? Okay, we'll take the Bonnie Paul. <laughs> we'll take Bonnie Paul in an island. How about that? 
Uh, alrighty. What do I want to do? Now I kind of want to play the Ankle Biter here because I want to Mana Drain into Bonnie Paul and get an attack in. Yeah, so I'll play it. Highway Robbery resolves. They discarded Visage. Ooh, Visage Bandit on Dust Animus is really cool. I'm surprised they, they pitched that one. What does this do? I don't know. I don't know what it does, but I'm going to Mana Drain it. <laughs> what? Come on! Oh, they knew about Bonnie Paul. <laughs> we got to Mana Drain into Bonnie Paul. That's insane. Again. Oh, that's awesome. All right, we are now rank 7 with our awesome Simic deck, and we are playing for a trophy. I am so happy I turned this back on. I mean, I was lit this was literally supposed to be a completely casual draft where I try to climb some rankings because it's really hard to do this. If, if it's just one draft a day, it's really hard to hit rank one, right? Like I have to play off stream to climb a little bit while I can. So that's what I tried to do. And then I opened Bonnie Paul and I was just like, honey, put everything on hold. I opened a Bonnie Paul, I need the record. Ooh, six and two playing against Herber Heasy. That's an old Magic Pro. He used to be a coworker of mine, Mark Herber holds. Very, uh, I mean, you can if you want to get as close to Hall of Fame without quite like he's been in the running for Hall of Fame for a long time. Very, very good Magic player. So, an ultimate test here to see. I think the last time I played against Mark, I lost, and he drafted like some really crazy sweet five color deck. I don't know if that's what he's going to try to do here, but I'm going to keep this hand. It's nothing spectacular, but um, we do have, you know, Phantom Interference on two with an Ankle Biter and a Voracious Varmint. So we'll go ahead and keep that. Secretly, I'm uh, yelling to myself 5-5-5 five, 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 as he's figuring out what to do on these mulligans. I think he would appreciate that too. Because you know why? I know Mark. We're buddies. Uh, we were in Curacao together. He would be saying the same thing to me. Isn't that right, Mark? It sure is. All right. Anyways. Turn one, Forlorn Flats from Mark. And I am going to lead things off here with a Voracious Varmint. Beat downs. All right, so maybe some kind of... What the? That is a Black Snag Buzzard that I can Thornado. So maybe I will Thornado. We'll see. I'm kind of saving this so that I can... Um, oh, I'm definitely countering that. Alright, Black Snag comes in. Uh, you know, if you if you wants to trade this, I'm happy with that. That's fine. And then we'll Lone Shark into Ankle Biter next turn. That's why I didn't play the Ankle Biter as well. I just wanted something to be able to... I wanted to guarantee that I can play something here with the Lone Shark. Ooh, alright. Let's play Ankle Biter into Lone Shark, and we have the Bonnie Paul ready to go, potentially. Spinewoods Paladin, interesting. I can cycle to make sure I hit a land, but I think it's much better to just plot the Spinewoods Paladin here. Just like such a good use of my mana, and I just beat down. I mean, he's down to two cards. If he mind rots me, I will be so sad. Skull Duggery here, it looks like what's happening here. Nope, Jailbreak Scheme. Definitely don't want to draw that. This is unblockable, okay. Land, come on! Land off the top, untap land! Let's go! No! No! All right, I'm going to try to hit a land here, or a mana source, or another Ankle Biter? Sure. All right. We drew Hollow Marauder, one of the worst draws. Consuming Ashes, okay. I do have this Ankle Biter here, though. So hopefully the last card isn't another removal spell, which would be kind of absurd if you had it. All right, we drew a land, and that's a Hollow Marauder. 
I'm kind of interested in uh, using the Hollow Marauder just to get the last card out of his hand. So let's go ahead and play that. Swamp was a nice one. Because if this last card is a removal spell, boom, the coast will be clear for the Bonnie Paul. Obviously, if he had a counter spell, he's going to use it here. So we'll see what this is. Could just be a removal spell or a bounce spell, maybe. Yeah, it's a bounce spell. That's fair. And that is an Oko. Okay. What did you draw for the turn? I'll take it. Are you going to drain me? Intimidation campaign. Good draw. Very good draw. In two? Oh, wow. And he gets to pick it up. Oh, my gosh. Filthy. But guess what else is filthy? Bonnie Paul. <laughs> Come on. Bonnie Paul on my side. Let's get this done. Come on. We have Mana Drain and Oko in our hand as well. We just need to untap. We just need to untap. Come on. Come on, Mark. I need this trophy. I need this trophy for the content, Mark. Do me a solid here. Just, you know, just like, just draw something bad. No, 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 not that. Come on, man. It's okay, I have a mana drain. I still feel good about this. Whew. What, what can I, can I do anything with copying? No, okay. He's at 10 life. Binding negotiation. Oh, I bet he wish. Oh, that was on top. Okay. Oh, 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 that's it, folks. That will do it. Please and thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Bonnie Paul for the win. Lucky number seven. And that is another trophy, and I'm so glad I turned on the stream, defeating an incredible, incredible player. I believe four Pro Tour top eights in Mark Herberholtz. Wow, this deck was a delight. It was so fun to play. How many rares did we have? One, two, three, four, five, two of which are mythic. I mean this. Uh, this, I mean this deck was just super, super sweet. I, I like Mana Drain, Oko, Bonnie Paul, Splash Hollow Marauders, Brazen Borrower, and then we had just enough to survive in the early game. Props to you, Ankle Biter. You're a role player. You get us to the late game. You trade. You let us cast our Hollow Marauders for treat. Admittedly, Hollow Marauder not at its best in this deck because we didn't have any self mill. So just keep that in mind. If you want to take the Hollow Marauder highly, you need to just make sure that you have enough things creatures early that can trade and rumble or self mill to make sure that you can play this at a discounted rate. Because if you play it at seven, it's whatever, right? You wanna be able to play this at like five where it's actually good. And for us, we played it at like six a lot of the time. So it wasn't at its best here, but I just, I, I this deck just played out beautifully. We had the tools to survive early. Card like Mana Drain allowed us to ramp into the Bonnie Paul. We had plenty of mana. I mean, we first picked like an Oasis Gardener in one of the packs. We had Hard Bristle Bandit, Oasis Gardener, um, a dance of the tumbleweeds and a spinewoods armadillo for mana fixing and we had some incredible bombs that won us a bunch of games thank you bonnie paul the season is almost at an end here and what better way to go out than with bonnie paul on your side the one of the best simic rares in the set Thank you, Bonnie, for the trophy. I appreciate you very much, very much. All right, well, there you have it, folks. Another trophy, seven and two, finishing us in rank number seven. Six more to go to catch Eakin, and I believe this might be trophy number 30 for us. So anyways, 
Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. If you've enjoyed the content and wanted to support the channel in another way, I do have a Patreon channel. The link to the Patreon is in the description below, and I do wanna give a very special shout out to all the current patrons. Thank you so much for your support, as it allows me to continue doing this, and I think I forgot to do that in the intro, so now you're gonna see it here scrolling at the end. But it's okay, it's still there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you tomorrow.